Hi everyone, it's Justine. I'm doing this video today because I have been shopping online and it went wrong. And I thought, nah, don't you know better by now? So there are very easy things that you can check before you hit that purchase button. And if you do that, if you check just a bit better, a bit longer, <laughs> you save so much more time in returning the pieces, making sure you do get the refund, etc. So here are five mistakes that you will not make anymore after watching this video. It fits the model, so it will fit me. I wanted to buy that red top. I checked the sizing, I looked it up in the size table, it was fine. There it said waist, bust, hip measurement. Okay, that's my size, I'm gonna get size M. Then I did something that you guys should do too. So far so good, I'm doing it right until now. I looked up the height of the model because I'm officially tall, I'm not regular size. I'm 5'11 in inches or 1 meter 79. So when the model is 170, usually that's the average on websites for, for commercial pictures, everything that they wear top will be too short on me. So that I know and I checked. In our example of that red top, it said Maya is 1 meter 79 and she's wearing size S. Great, she's even exactly exactly my height, so perfect. What she's wearing, where it's falling on her, will be long enough for me too. Done deal, purchase, click. And then I received the top and it looks like this. Obviously too short, it's barely hiding my belly, clearly not fitting. What happened? I'm not just tall, I also have a long torso and I trusted the pictures, I saw how much lower than her waist the top is landing and I thought will do the job for me. I should have looked for the length of the garment. Usually the description would say the garment has a total length of x centimeters. That's the information you're looking for. It's measured at the back from the bottom of the neck at shoulder level and then you go down to the hem in the middle following your spine. If your body is not a standard, so if you don't have the exact proportions of a model, just bigger or smaller, for instance, if you're petite, if you're tall, if you have a longer torso, if you have shorter arms, longer arms, you need to check the length of the garment. You cannot rely solely on the pictures that you see, even if the girl there has your exact height and pretty much the same size as you have. The thing is, if the patterns are well made for that design you're looking at, then the length varies according to the size. For the things that I design for my clothes, each piece in each size has a different length. So often the total length of the garment will not be indicated in the product description on the product page of the website you're looking at. But if you write to the customer service, they must be able to tell you according to a table, if this is your size, this is the total length of the garment. If they can't do that, that's an alarm signal for me. It's a bad sign. It means that they don't have their patterns under control. That's typically the case where it says, falls smaller, falls larger, it depends. I thought I was M, but actually this size is like an S. That should ring a bell. It should tell you, ooh, cheap production, it's not going to be good quality, I cannot rely on the fit. That's typically a store where I wouldn't buy anything. I answer questions from my own customers every day. I do that personally, not my team, when they have questions about sizing because I'm the one who knows the patterns. Number two, I am always a size 36. I know my size in pants is very easy, I'm pretty standard indeed, and I'm almost always a size 36 according to the EU sizing system, European size. And I wanted those lovely wool pants. So I ordered them and I liked the idea that they sit a little bit low on the waist. I found that cool, it's a little bit baggy, a little bit relaxed, very comfortable. Then I received this. In those pants, I look like an eight year old wearing her dad's trousers. It looks like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> what doesn't fit here is the design itself. See these tucks underneath the waistband? They give me more space, but I didn't need any more space here. If you look at it from the side, see, you could fit both legs in here. So what happened? Understanding your correct size is not enough. As you can see in this example, you also need to look at the details, at the view from all different angles. You wanna see a picture from the from the side and the back so you can see the details like these tucks. In this case, they changed the design, they changed the shape of the pants and they changed the fit. So in fact, I should have gone one size down 
and I still would have had enough space everywhere. It wouldn't have been tight at all because I'm a pear shape, so my largest area is the hip level. And there you see in these pens, at the hip level, you have plenty of space. What's the return policy again? This is one that probably happened to everyone. It happened to me again recently. For instance, I ordered this nice umbrella on a French website thinking I will support my country's industry and order one that's made in France. Shipping costs are the same everywhere in Europe, so fine, let's do this. Problem, the umbrella arrived broken. That's when I started to look for the return policy. Mistake, I should have done that a lot earlier. Turned out they ship everywhere in Europe, but they only accept returns for free in France. And I'm based in Germany. Oh well, should have looked better. Fine, the umbrella was 35 euros, shipping it back is 690 in Europe, so okay, still worth exchanging it, right? Turns out it's longer than 60 centimeters, so it's uh, specific goods, blah blah blah, shipping costs 18 euros. Conclusion for me, I really don't want to leave that umbrella on the subway or in a restaurant somewhere. Conclusion for you, before you purchase anything, of course, look at the return policy, it will avoid a lot of trouble. There are many websites that will literally ship anywhere in the world, but then they'll make it very difficult or costly for you to return anything. I think that's unfair and it sucks. The good thing for, for you, for us customers, in pretty much every country by now, there is a legal obligation for commercial websites to display transparently where they ship to, where they take returns from, at which cost, if any, that has to be displayed somewhere on the website where consumers can actually find it. So the law is very precise about that. If you look, usually at the bottom of the website in the footer area with contact, social media, blah, blah, you have the terms and conditions and you have the shipping and return policy. It has to be stated transparently in there. So if you actually look for it, you will find the info you need. Number four, somehow it doesn't look and or feel the way I expected it to and I'm disappointed. You probably had that one before. I had before I studied fashion. The garment on the picture on the website looks great. It falls nicely. It has never been washed, ironed, manipulated or dry cleaned in any way. It's never going to look better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so how to avoid disappointment once you receive the stuff you've ordered. Always check the material, the fabric composition and the care instructions. Those two parameters alone can make a huge difference in the look and feel and in the durability of the clothing that you're purchasing. Very often when the cut looks complex but somehow the price looks okay, they save money on the fabric. That's the first thing where they literally cut all the corners. If you see a dress that looks like silk but costs less than 100 euros, it's probably in polyester or in acetate. Acetate doesn't breathe, it smells when you sweat, and it loses its color and turns into another color when you expose it to sunlight. That's the kind of thing that you want to know. Think prom dresses, they're often in acetate. They're in a fabric you can't dance in, which is a contradiction for a prom dress. <laughs> if you feel that you don't know enough about the properties of the fabrics. I've done a video series on that. Natural fibers, synthetic fibers, what they're good at, what they're not good at, how they get combined to improve the properties of the fabric, etc. I will link here in the corner and down below in the description all those videos. And then you have the care instructions. For instance, if you see this list of icons, what does it mean? It means that you can't wash the garment, not even by hand. You can't iron it, you can't bleach it, you can't tumble dry it, and you can't dry clean it. How on earth are you supposed to take care of a garment like that? If I see those icons, I won't buy it in the first place. I wouldn't know how to clean it after wearing it just once. It's waste, in my opinion. It's not a garment that I want to own at all. So I wouldn't order it. If you feel that you want to know more about what all these icons mean, I have an older video about that, which is called How to Care for Your Clothes. I will also link it here and, and down below for you guys. With these tips, I hope that you feel more confident, a bit better equipped for the next time you're gonna shop online. If you feel just a bit smarter about all this topic, thumbs up, thank you very much. And before you're off to watch the other videos that are linked in the description, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in fashion. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Sunday. So see you very soon again.
拜。